Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Xian, and today I'm going to be talking to you about the iPhone 12 mini in purple. The purple bit's probably the most important part, so please keep that in mind. Speaking of the color purple, Apple, please release the 2022 MacBooks with purple variants. You've released colorful iMacs this year. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you put out next year. No Asus, you will still be my main PC. However, a purple MacBook is something I'd consider as a side hoe. Just being honest. Anyways, the roadmap for this video will be first, the benefits of iOS. Second, the benefits specifically of the Mini's form factor and design. Third, some things which everyone's talked about as like a drawback of the Mini, but with my experience as a Mini, weren't really drawbacks. And fourth, the drawbacks that I experienced, not just getting the iPhone 12 mini, but specifically as someone who switched from Android into Apple for the first time ever. Before that though, I want to throw a disclaimer out there. Apple does not send me their products. I'm a ridiculously small channel, so when you see me reviewing the iPhone 12 mini, it's because I've actually bought it. However, I will not be explaining why I bought the iPhone 12 mini in this video. If you're interested, that video will be linked in the card section as soon as it comes out. So first, the benefits of iOS. Primarily, the big benefit would be the apps. Many of the ones that already exist are better optimized for iOS than Android, including Instagram, Facebook, and also the dating apps like Tinder, Hinge, and Bumble. Secondly, I really enjoyed the Apple sleep and wake up alarm. My wake up experience with this is nicer than any other wake up alarm that I've ever used. Although Instagram specifically has become much better over 2021 for Android, at least from what I've experienced. Additionally, Netflix is also a little better optimized on my iPhone, for example, when I was watching Netflix on my OnePlus, it does this funny thing where tapping the screen does not get rid of the play-pause controls, which it is supposed to do, but that works just fine on my iPhone. Furthermore, new apps of all kinds tend to come to iOS before they come to Android, and some of these apps' Android versions are just terribly made, but that's sort of the price you have to pay for the diversity in the Android sphere. Benefit of iPhones number two, bandwidth compatibility. My OnePlus 6 was compatible with only six out of the 10 AT&T bands, so there were places where my parents' phones had service but my OnePlus did not. This is an issue with most enthusiast phones outside of their countries of origin. However, iPhones, being as mainstream as they are, work extremely well no matter who your carrier is or most, or really whatever country you're living in. Number three, third-party device apps. Recently, I bought the Insta360 Go 2. The Insta360 app that is used to offload footage and control, the preview of the Insta360 Go 2 was released on iOS before the camera itself came out but the Android version was launched the day of the camera's release. Additionally, the Android version of the app just does not connect to the camera. Like I tried for two hours. Meanwhile, both my iPad and my iPhone connected to it almost instantly. <sighs> but that's about it for the pros of iOS specifically from my experience as a new iOS user. So now let's talk about the benefits of the mini. First and foremost, it's small and light. This means that I get to take it on runs more easily. It fits into smaller spaces like my camping chair, phone holder, the MagSafe wallet aligns very nicely unlike on the actual 12, and I can also use it with one hand more easily. Like look at this! I can reach all the way across and my fingers can meet each other across the screen. That's fabulous. The seamless connection between iMessage and calls to my iPad, although this is a pro of just any iPhone in general, this should have been in the previous section. My apologies for that. But this interconnectedness between Apple devices is super, super nice. Many times when I'm working on my iPad at lab or a cafe, it is nice to have any text show up on my iPad screen so I can reply to them with my keyboard. Since most of the time when I'm outside, my phone is on silent mode. So this definitely helps ensure that I don't miss calls or texts. And now the things that I was expecting to kind of be a problem, but didn't end up bothering me much at all. First, I was expecting that smaller screen to irritate me when I'm trying to watch videos because, you know, the screen's smaller, so I was expecting the view to be worse. However, it's actually not uncomfortable to watch videos on the 12 mini. Like, the screen is very decently sized. When you're lying down, though, and holding your phone up above your face, it's actually a much nicer experience because the phone is considerably lighter. It was also not uncomfortable when I was using it as navigation while driving. I was expecting the small screen to be a little bit more irritating over there, because it would be harder to see, but that wasn't the case at all. Navigation was just fine. Secondly, I was expecting reading to be a problem, but it wasn't. I thought I wouldn't be able to read comfortably because of the small screen it would cramp up all of the words and paragraphs, but I could read comfortably on Kindle and Libby, but I just had to do more scrolling. Reading my emails was also fine. Everything got resized so that way it would fit nicely across the screen. 
I read the Morning Brew every day in the morning, as well as the Emerging Tech Brew, and recently the Marketing Brew, whenever those come out. They aren't sponsoring this video, obviously, I have no sponsors, but if you haven't subscribed to them already, if you could use my subscription link down below, I'd get some referral rewards for that, and that would be super nice. All right, now let's talk about the drawbacks. First and foremost, there is no fingerprint sensor, and facial recognition is abominable. Like, my OnePlus 6 can recognize me through my mask. Apple does not let you store your face with a mask, and cannot recognize you while wearing one. It's definitely had plenty of exposure with me wearing a mask over the course of two months, but it just does not see my face through the mask. My OnePlus 6 sees that just fine. It also has a fingerprint sensor. So, this means when you're in public with an iPhone, you have to enter your code in, because there's no other way to unlock your phone, unless you've got the iPhone SE. Secondly, there is no messenger bubble, because apparently app overlays risk my data. This is mildly annoying because I have become accustomed to having that convenience on Android. However, it's not unreasonable considering the fact that iPhones are the most frequently hacked phones compared to any other phones, primarily due to their popularity. Third, there are not as many widgets. The one that bothers me the most is actually the lack of a full screen calendar. I really use this one on my OnePlus a lot, but on the Mini, it may not be that nice due to the smaller screen, but I'd still have liked to have it, where I just have all of the details of the entire month out in the open in front of me on one of the widgets without having to go to the app to see it. Fourth drawback, it's not USB-C. Like, come on, Apple. You make your iPads USB-C, you make your MacBooks USB-C, but not your iPhone. Like, I know it makes you money to use Lightning, but please, stop. You're supposed to be all about compatibility between your devices and the seamless integration in the Apple ecosystem, and an amazing experience for everyone within that ecosystem, and everything should be tightly and integrated. So why is your best-selling device not using USB-C like the rest of them? Con number five, there is limited clipboard storage functionality. If you are someone who writes emails or posts a lot of links into their social media posts, sharing a ton of URLs, this is super annoying because iOS only lets you copy one thing into your clipboard, while Android lets you see everything you've copied for like a week. The lack of this feature annoys me the most out of any other feature because most of the time when I'm using my phone, I'm on the go. So if there was just some way for me to efficiently work on the go, like whenever I needed to on my iPhone, I would really love for those features to be added into iOS. But the fact that you just can't get them annoys the livid daylights out of me. Like, sure. My laptop also has this problem, but that's not really an issue on my laptop because there are tons of control shortcuts that I can use to jump between pages or desktops to get those links and put them into the post super quickly and efficiently. Those functions don't exist on phones. So the fact that Android has a clipboard that can store a bunch of things that you've copied does make life or really work on Android a lot simpler and a lot easier than it is on iPhone. On number six, maps doesn't let you create root shortcuts onto your home screen. It doesn't even let you save root options. So if you're someone like me and you use the bus a lot, on Android, you can add the root to your home screen, but the option does not exist on iOS. Major drawback for some of us that want quick and easy access to the timings of buses, for example. All right, that is everything for the pros and cons in the review. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts down in the comment section below. For now though, I hope you have a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you again soon.